Hey, 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 it's Rod Bergeron here with you today and we're looking at um, this wheat field and today we're going to do this wheat field a little bit differently. You've probably seen the wheat field that I did um, in just watercolor, uh, which is different for me because I usually use some pen or some other line in it, but um, the last one was just strictly watercolor. So today we're going to do it in watercolor, but we're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, so remember, we're going to do a quick little thumbnail, just like we always do. Um, I think it worked best when I had the thumbnail where my cornfield on the left um, came off the page like that, below the one-third line, almost to the center, and then this is going to come off and roll off this way. There's a little patch of trees on the far right, and... We're going to do that with it. It's not going to come up quite to the one-third line. Or I should say just over the one-third line maybe. This would this was probably too high. So it's probably going to come up like that. There's a rolling hill in the background here where our uh, wheat field is. And then we have some trees and then some trees. I think this is probably a little bit too high. So let's go back and do our thumbnail again. We're gonna make that come across there. Where this dips in here, it's gonna be right around the one third line, create some visual interest. So now we need to transcribe from here to here. So always remembering one third, you know, if we get our composition right, I always say if we get our composition right, everything else is really gravy. Um, I don't do any measuring for this. I visually split it up into one, two, three, one, two, three, and I just put little ticks on the side of the page so I know. So now all I'm doing is I'm moving this information. So remember, we're not doing this one. I'm moving this information onto here. The one thing that I know is that this triangle is going to come out across here. So I'm going to turn this into a piece of fauvism because I really like fauvism. If you aren't really too sure about what fauvism is, um, the fauves were a group of painters who studied strong color and shapes rather than a lot of detail. So that's what we're going to do with this. Today is a bright sunny day. How it is that I'm gonna denote bright sunny day is I'm gonna make this bright sunny yellow. Okay, instead of blue sky, it's gonna be bright sunny yellow sky. Um, and then we're gonna change some other colors around in here too, but we're going for bright, bright color. Okay, so I'm going to put my pencil away, I'm going to grab out my brush, and I'm going to grab up my paint set here. I'm going to get rid of my eraser now, and I'm going to clip my paint set onto my board. Um, like I said, I'm going to, this is going to be bright sunny yellow. So what it is that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab up some water here. Put some water into these wells. One of the things I wanted to talk to you about today was timing, about you know how it is to continuously keep painting. One of the things that I do in the studio is I have multiple paintings all going on at the same time. We can't really do that when we're outside. In plein air is a lot different. So one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to work on this area. And then I'm going to work on an area that's not connected to this so that my yellow doesn't bleed into it. Now, if you want one color to bleed into the other, you don't have to worry about timing. If you want to keep this yellow and not have another color run into it, then you need to work on a section that's not touching it. Remember, a lot of the magic about watercolor painting is that when I wet this area, this paint will not run into another area unless it's wet. So as long as this air edge along here stays dry that yellow is not going to be able to run down into another area so I'll show you what I mean I'm going to take my brush I'm going to wet this whole area more 
So I'm going to put, I'm looking for my painting to take a while to dry, except for, you know, to, to stay wet when I'm trying to work wet on wet. And when I want it to dry, I'll take it and I'll put it in the sun. I'm going to grab a lot of this yellow. This is Sennelier, and I believe this one is lemon yellow. I'm going to put that into this water. I'm going to pick up some more. I'm going to grab a little bit more water here. All right. I'm going to put this yellow onto this page. So I'm loading my brush, and then I'm tapping the brush onto the page to get the paint off the brush and onto the page. I'm going to do the same on this side. Okay, now I'm going to take my brush and my paint set and I'm going to set them over to the side for a second. And while I'm bent down there, I'm going to grab my coffee. Yeah, you guessed it. When you're bending down to set one thing down or pick something up, grab your coffee. Breakfast of ex-champions. We're going to let this yellow run all the way from one side over to the other. And you'll see right here that's dried up a little bit. I'm just going to grab a little bit of water here. Float that right into that spot like that. Let it run from one side over to the other. All right, so that's turned out all right. I want this cornfield to be a much, much more intense color. So I'm gonna grab up my paint set here. I don't want that cornfield to be green, dark green. I want that cornfield to be purple or some other crazy color. You you decide, but. For me, I'm going to make it purple. So I'm going to grab up some some paint, some bleep. I'm going to grab up some water there, reanimate that purple, give it a little try. Maybe make it a little bit redder. Give it a little try. A little bit more pigment in that. All right. This is wet. This is dry. So this is wet on dry. Nice long stroke. Um, so I'm going to work on a different area now because this area doesn't touch this area and I don't want this to bleed into this and I don't want this to bleed into that. So I can work on a different area. The other area that I'm going to work on right now is this clump of trees right here. Now I want you to just set this aside in the sun, go and have a coffee, come back when it's dry, okay? Now I'm going to take this, I'm going to start working here with this one and I'm going to do this area up here first so the fauves are a really I find to be a really super interesting group because they were you know it, w it was sort of a backlash against realism you know they they were tired of you know this whole high realism thing and so they wanted to do anything that was not high realism. And I kind of don't blame them. I think, um, you know, I, I think there's some needs for realism, but I think the majority of time, there's really not. I mean, it's, this is art. This is supposed to be, you know, art making, not, um, 
not trying to copy a photograph not not trying to be you know absolutely 100 percent uh real i i don't think there's a, a lot of need for it in well there wasn't a need for it in 1910 and i think there's probably not a need for it now either so that's just my personal opinion you can do whatever you want to do with that So my color has started to leak out of here into an area that I don't want to be in. So I'm going to take my tissue and I'm going to dry it off like that. And it's a little too blue right now. Oh crap. It's a little too blue right there for me. I was going to try to put some clean water on there, but the brush was less than clean. I'm going to take this brush, which I haven't used in a while. Just wet that. And then I'm going to take my tissue. I'm just going to take some of that right out. Okay. So. I'm going to tip it a little bit. this to come right up to this purple all right now I'm gonna take my brushes and my paint set and I'm gonna set it aside nicely this time so I don't spill the entire thing I'm gonna hang on to my tissue Okay, so this has to be completely dry before it is before we do this so one of the things that I'm going to think about is what color do I want to put on here I have this purple which is working really good with this yellow I have this blue which really doesn't have uh, any kind of a contrasting complementary color I should say there's really no complement right now to that so a good complement to these blues would be orange right so Let's think about how orange we want this field to be. We're going to let this dry. We're going to come back and have a look at it. Okay, so we're back. This is all dried up very nicely. Um, I think I'm going to stick with my original idea of I'm going to make this orange. The, the more I look at it, the more I think this purple, you know, red, however it is that you want to think about this, really contrasts really well with the yellow that I have in the sky. The the blue, the green in here is sort of being complemented. I shouldn't say contrast, I should say complemented. The complement to purple is yellow. Yellow complements purple. But this also could be red as the color red. Um, and so there's some green mixing in here, which gives a really good complementary color. Um, so I think this is going to be orange. Not I think it's going to be orange, it's going to be orange. Um, I'm going to take a um, flat, half inch flat brush, and I'm going to mix up quite a bit of yellow here. This is a pretty big area, so I'm going to put quite a bit of water in here picks up pick up a lot of yellow so quite a bit of yellow pigment put it into this we want this orange to be fairly intense not fairly intense we want it to be intense okay so I'm going to take that and I'm going to add a little bit of red to it so I'm going to take a little bit of water over here where I had mixed this purple up earlier okay and I'm going to put this Sennelier red into this fairly intensely. Okay. And I'm just going to add a little drop of this into this. And I'm going to take my brush that I had the yellow with and I'm going to mix that up. I'm going to take a little bit more red, put it into this, mix it up. 
put a little bit more red into this mix it up okay see it's starting to go it's starting to get close to orange but it's still fairly yellow so we'll mix that up we'll see what color we get when we put that on the page here so that's still I would say fairly close to yellow and we want this to be orange give it a little try not quite I need a significant amount of red into this to make this into the orange that I'm thinking about and I'm just gonna keep doing that keep adding the red to this You know, I might do this, for me, I, I could do this 50 times before I get to the orange that I really want it to be. This is getting pretty close now. That's pretty close. So I'm going to take all of this orange, and I'm going to be pretty careful with it. And I'm going to paint right up to the edge of the blue, not quite touching the blue that I have on there. Pick up all the orange. So when you're color mixing, it's very important to have a lot of patience. Don't get in a big hurry when it comes to color mixing. Take your time and get the color that you want. Remember, this is your painting. Make it the color that you want it to be. I think for me this is the fun part this is the part where I get to be creative this is the part where I get to move stuff around and you know just have fun with allowing it to do its own thing and see what it ends up being uh, without too much intervention from me I mean, the only intervention is the color that I made it and you know how it is that um, the amount that I tip it and allow it to run into wherever it wants to go and that's what I'm doing here. I'm just letting this run to wherever wherever it thinks it needs to go to. You know, being very intuitive about your painting and just allowing your painting to, you know, allowing your painting, the paint and your painting to do some of the work and not have to touch it every single second that you're painting. Allowing your paint to run and get to places that you don't have to move it to. That's what painting should be. Painting should be, you know, partially accidental and, and, and you know, partially skill and partially patience, allowing things to do their own thing. All right, so um, this has turned out pretty much the way that I thought it was going to turn out. It's turned out the way that I think about it, not necessarily the way that I see it. And that for me is the fun of painting. It's certainly the fun of being outside and doing your own, doing your own thing and not worrying about what other people are going to say about your work. Do your own thing. You do you. If you want to do fauvism, do fauvism. If you don't want to, if you want to do high realism, go crazy. I'm probably not your guy. But, you know, have fun with your art. Um, show some creativity. Make it your own. You do you. You make your use your creativity to make your art. Okay. Don't worry about what anybody else is going to say or how anybody else is going to view your art. Make your art for yourself and do you. Okay. So if you learned anything from this, I would really appreciate you leaving me a comment telling me that you learned something, or maybe you didn't learn anything from it. Uh, maybe you're just having some fun with it. I'd love to hear from you. Um, if you got a question or a comment, leave it in the comment section. If you're currently a subscriber, I thank you very much. If you're not currently a subscriber, I need to know that people are out there watching me. So uh, click, hit that subscribe button. 
this is turning out not too bad. I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to sign this one, to tell you the truth. That's, uh, I don't sign a lot of work, but I think I'm going to sign this one. Alright, let's go eat some lunch.